Now that you know how to use if expressions in Kotlin, the only logical thing to look at next are when expressions. And of course they're the equivalent of the switch statement in Java and other languages, but they're more powerful. So let's take a closer look at how to use them in Kotlin. So let's first go ahead and create a new variable here again, in this case of course immutable because we don't need it to be mutable. And I'm just gonna say the price is let's say 29. So I'm just going for an integer here first of all, just for simplicity and just to show you how the when construct actually works. So now we can go ahead and say when price in parentheses and then open up a block using curly braces. So, so far pretty much the same as using switch here in Java. But now the syntax is very different. There's no case keyword or something like that. You just put the expression that you want to check for against the price variable on the left hand side. So let's say for example, when price is zero, then we want to print line for free today. So you just use this arrow notation here to define the right hand side, or in other words, what's supposed to happen if the price variable is zero. And similarly, you could go and check for specific values like let's say 19, and that would be on sale for example. But a more interesting and also more useful way to use this in this case is to check for ranges. So let's say if the price is somewhere in one to 19, we want to say it's on sale. And that's exactly how you write this in Kotlin. So you can just use in and then simply create a range from one to 19 using the dot dot notation here. So this means now that this branch will be executed for any value between one and 19, both included. And similarly, you could go ahead and say when it's in somewhere between 20 to 29, you're gonna say, well, normal price. And then next, what you can also do is you can define a default case, just like in Java, but you use the else keyword for this. So you can say else print line overpriced in this case. And we can also go ahead and run this for now to just check out what's gonna happen. In this case, when the price is set to 29, it's gonna come back and say normal price. But there are also some other things you can do that I wanna show you. So one thing is you can also have a function call on the left hand side. So one very simple function call would be just an addition, which is basically a function call on the plus operator. So you could say if it's 10 plus 20, you can say, well, slightly overpriced maybe, because it's gonna be 30. But you could also call any custom function here on the left hand side, as long as the return value matches the data type of the variable you're working with. And then also you can check whether a variable is not in a range by simply using an exclamation mark like you would do in logical expressions. So when price is not in one to 19, well, let's go ahead and just write not on sale. And if I go ahead and run this now, then that's gonna be the first block in this when expression or when statement that's gonna be executed or that's gonna match because price is set to 29, so it's not in one to 19 and it's gonna print not, in, not on sale. And notice very importantly here that it's only gonna print this even though it would also match the left-hand side here. So what's important to notice is that in contrast to Java, we don't need to use a break statement explicitly because each of those right-hand sides or branches here breaks automatically at the end. So you're only ever gonna run into one of these blocks and not multiple of them, even if multiple left-hand sides here would match the variable that you're checking against. And that's because in other programming languages like Java, forgetting to use a break at the end of every branch is actually a common source of defects in your code. So this is a design decision here for safety in your code. And I think it's a good choice because there are really not many cases where you really wanna have this behavior to really skip into the next branches as well in a when statement. All right, so moving on now to another syntax where you can just use the when expression or when statement without actually having any variable in there. And in this case, all the left-hand sides before the arrow must be a Boolean expression. So what we could do now is we could say if price is less than or equal to 19, we could again go ahead and say sale. 
Then next, if the price is less than or equal to 29, and notice that it's only ever gonna come into here if the price is greater or equal to 20, then we're gonna say, well, normal price, and then we can use else, we're gonna say print line overpriced. So in this case, now we have Boolean expressions on every left-hand side, and of course, we can still use else for the default case, and then it's gonna come back and print normal price. Now later when we talk about object orientation, we can also check for types on the left-hand side using something like instance of in Java, but that's something we can take a look at once we actually have object orientation. For now, there's one more important thing again to know about the when expressions in Kotlin, which is just that it's an expression again. So same as with the if expression, we can have a return value for the when statement or when expression, I should say. So we could go ahead and say val well, let me actually go back with error up to our expression before. And I'm gonna go ahead and say val x is equal to this when expression. And instead of printing out the strings, I'm actually gonna make them the return type. So now this way, they're gonna define what the value of x should be. Because now each of the branches here returns a string, meaning that the whole when expression here is also gonna be of type string and that's gonna be assigned to x. So let's go ahead and try to run this, and then let's go ahead and print out x. And you can see, well, in this case, it should come back with normal price, but I suppose that the IDE crashed on me again because it also showed IDE error occurred. So let me quickly go ahead and just copy this part of the code, then restart a new Kotlin REPL. All right, so unfortunately the Kotlin REPL again crashed on me here in the Android Studio preview, but I just set this up again. So what I did was copy the code here that assigns X to the when expression, and I actually set the price to 39 in this case, just to get a different result for a change. So let's go ahead and run this block here again to assign X to the value of the when expression. And then let's go ahead and just say X to get the value of it and it's gonna come back with overpriced. So again, this is often helpful to avoid having to set x to null first in order to then initialize it in a if then else block or in a when block like this, just to find out what kind of value you wanna set it to. And this when expression here without actually having a variable in parentheses is just a good way to avoid having long chains of if and else if chains and instead using the when expression can make it more concise, but it's just a matter of taste. So you're gonna have to see whether you prefer to have this when expression or just if, else, if, else, if, else, if, and so on. All right, so that's it about the when expression in Kotlin. So again, notice it's an expression, not just a statement as in Java. You can check for specific values or ranges, or also check if it's not in a range. You can have function calls on the left-hand side, and you use the else keyword for the default cases. And in contrast to Java, you can also have a when expression here without actually having a variable in parentheses, and then all of the left-hand sides must be Boolean expressions. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next lecture.